hate to break it to you, plant friends, but you're probably overestimating the amount of light that you have inside for your house plants. But fear not. I'm going to break down exactly how you can measure your natural indoor light and then pick the right plants to match your indoor environment so you can grow happy, healthy plants and grow joy alongside them. Growing joy. Hello, my plant friends. I'm Maria, your new best plant friend, and I'm here to help you care for plants successfully and more importantly, grow joy in your life while doing so. The saddest thing that could happen is if you pick a plant, you bring it home and it wilts and slowly dies because you don't understand the light that it needs. We don't perceive light in the same way our plants do. And it's really hard as humans to sometimes understand the differences and figure out what that sweet spot is lighting wise for our plants to thrive. Because let's be real. Plants need light to survive. If you remember from like second grade or third grade science class, plants perform photosynthesis in which they take sunlight, they pair it up with a few other things, and they make their own food. So plants need sunlight to make food. You can think about it. Plants eat sunlight. So no sunlight, no food, dead plants. I'm very sorry. Before we dive in, I also want to give a quick thanks to Proven Winners Leaf Joy for partnering on today's video. I'm so excited to dive into understanding light because I feel like, especially if you are a former plant killer, if you are a beginner plant parent, it is really hard to understand how much light you have indoors. I myself am a former plant killer. I have pulled myself out of plant killerdom into happy plant ladydom by doing seven years of interviews on plant care on my podcast, Growing Joy with Plants. And I've learned a thing or two, but I can't believe how hard it was when I was a plant killer to accurately understand how much light I had in my house because... There are so many different factors going on when you're assessing your own home environment and the light that you have for your house plans. And no home is created equally. Everybody's indoor lighting scenario is a unique snowflake. If I bring a snake plant home and I care for it in my windowsill and you bring a snake plant home and you care for it in your windowsill, because of a variety of factors that we're about to go into, those snake plants are going to grow and thrive very differently. So let's dive in. I'm not diving into the science that much with you plant friends because I'm not a scientist. I'm a plant killer turned plant lady. I have a degree in opera and I am not that interested in the science. I'm just interested in having happy plants, but a few fun facts. So chlorophyll is where photosynthesis happens and that's a green pigment. That's why we see green. Where you see green in the leaves is where photosynthesis happens. Interestingly enough, fun fact, humans see plants as green because chlorophyll absorbs blue and red wavelengths to do the photosynthesis and then reflects the green wavelengths back. And that's why we see green as a lot of houseplants. Another important thing to understand that photosynthesis happens in the green is that when you have a variegated plant like this ficus that has a lot of white in its leaves, there's no photosynthesis able to happen in the white of the leaves. So if you have a variegated plant If I had this plant and I had an unvariegated version of the same plant, the same exact structure, it's just that these leaves were variegated and these weren't, this plant would need more light because it has less chlorophyll. It has less opportunity to photosynthesize in it. That's why you often see variegated plants tend to need more light. Another general thought about light is if a plant is colorful, if a plant has pinks in it, if it has purples in it, if there's a lot of white in it, if it's not green, it's likely going to need more light to support itself because those the chlorophyll and the chloroplasts have to like do a little bit harder work for the plant to make more food because it's it there it's working with less, if that makes sense. And then now we're done with the science, okay? Things to keep in mind. Know that no matter what, the amount of light outdoors, like the shadiest part of outdoors is likely more light than the light that we have indoors. Because if you think about it inside, we're only getting light through little windows, right? So the volume of light coming in through those windows is very different than the volume of light that's just like hitting our grass or hitting trees outdoors. Another thing that really bugs me is that plants don't thrive in low light indoors. Plants are low light tolerant. So I get a lot of questions. What plants thrive in low light? What are good low light plants? It's important to understand that plants are low light tolerant. They're not going to thrive in low light, but they will tolerate low light. They need less light in order to continue sustaining themselves. But I'm never going to say, oh yeah, this plant loves low light. No, this plant will survive in low light. But generally, I would suggest putting plants in more light than less light because you're probably overestimating the amount of light that you have. Because like I said before, we perceive brightness differently than our plants can. When talking about light, I have to talk about my friend Leslie Halleck, who wrote a whole book on light. But I love a analogy that she gives about light. So think about a leaf 
as a solar panel, right? And the volume of light, so each little photon of light is like a raindrop. The idea is that we want as many raindrops on this solar panel or on this leaf as possible. So the more raindrops we can get on the leaf, the more opportunity the leaf has to make food for itself and grow and bloom and be bushy and be happy, right? So the idea is when we're talking about the volume of light, we want as much light as possible to hit our plant's leaves either in one moment or over the course of a period of a day. So a lot of times when you see grow lights, you can kind of tinker with your grow lights to leave them on for a longer period of time. That's extending the volume of light that a plant gets over the course of day. And that's also where we come into high light, medium light, and low light plants. It's what volume of light do they need to thrive in a 24-hour time period? But once again, I don't want to get into the weeds too much for this video. This is going to be a high level understanding natural light. So let's talk about some basics for how you can understand your specific personal lighting environment in your house because it's like a snowflake. It's not the same as anybody else's. So if you're only to do one thing today from this video, understand the orientation of your windows. Get your phone out or an old school compass, but most of your smartphones now have compasses on them. Open the compass out and walk up to your window. Hold the compass to your window and see what direction your window is facing, right? You want to walk through your house, wherever you want to put plants, you want to see the exposure of your window. Once you understand that, then we can start working with assessing your indoor light. So when it comes to window exposure, and this is for the Northern Hemisphere, so reverse this if you're in the Southern Hemisphere watching this video, a Southern facing windows are the brightest opportunity for light. The most volume of light is going to come into your Southern facing windows because the sun rises in the East and sets in the West. So as it's moving through its arc in the sky, your Southern window is going to experience light that whole day, right? The second strongest window exposure is going to be west because it rises in the east. It's a little bit gentler in the morning. It moves through the sky as it goes high and keeps arcing. It gets stronger and stronger, hotter and hotter throughout the day. And then it sets in the west. So it's stronger in the west. Then it's a little bit gentler in the east. And if you have northern exposure, this is where you're going to struggle a little bit because you get no direct light from a northern exposure. So if you have a northern window, you're going to need to have low light tolerant plants in that northern window. But eastern windows, western windows, and southern windows, that's when we get to start playing with highlight plants and bright indirect light plants. Now, you found your window exposure. This is where it gets tricky. Let's take two people who have southern facing windows, okay? Now, you gotta go over to your window and look out your window. One person has a building across from them or a tree that has leafed out. That southern facing window is gonna get shade because the sun is gonna be on the other side of the building or the tree and the sun is gonna get blocked. This person has unobstructed views of the sun in the sky. This person is gonna get so much more light than this person. So first you have to understand your window exposure. Next, you have to understand what obstructions are affecting your exposure and rendering it basically a different exposure. So this is Southern facing. This Southern facing window that has a building or a tree in it might be rendered into the equivalent of a Northern facing window or an Eastern facing window, because depending on the arc of the sun, maybe it's only getting that direct light from the sun, like in the morning or in the afternoon, right? So this is when you need to become a super sleuth and figure out what might be the potential blocks. A lot of people struggle because trees that are deciduous will drop their leaves in the winter. They'll actually get more light in the winter than when the trees leaf out they start to get shaded light, right? So there's all sorts of factors that can affect you. Balconies are another thing, right? Is a balcony above you shading your light? There's all sorts of different factors. How do you know if you have direct light? Great question. Put yourself where your plant is and look at the sun. Is the sun streaming on your face? Then yes, that's direct light. Is there something blocking the sun? Does your window have maybe a shade in it? If your window has a curtain, that might be bright indirect, right? But basically, you need to look, is the sun directly hitting your leaves? Another way that you can measure this is the hand test. So basically, like, I would go up to my window, I'd put my hand here, and I'd see if my hand casts a shadow. If my hand casts a shadow, that means the light that's hitting my hand is strong enough to cast a shadow. So that's another way to look at it. But that's direct light. Once you figure out if this plant has direct light, then you also have to see how long does this plant have direct light? Does this get eight hours of direct light in a Southern exposure? Or is this in an Eastern window where it's going to get a couple of hours of direct light in the morning and then it's pretty much going to be in shade all afternoon? What the heck does bright indirect sunlight mean, right? How many plant cards do you get? And it says bright indirect sunlight. And you're like, 
I, I don't know what this means. What is bright indirect sunlight? What is life? What are plants? What is anything, right? Bright indirect sunlight. If you have a southern facing window with a, sh- with a curtain, so it's a little bit veiled, that's going to be bright sunlight that's indirect through the curtain. If you take your plant more than a foot away from a window, you're automatically in bright indirect territory. Depending on how long it's been since you cleaned your windows, if you have very dirty windows, if you're maybe high up in an apartment building and the outside hasn't been cleaned and it's got that filmed, that can be bright indirect light. But the biggest thing I feel like with people who don't really understand bright indirect light is the volume of light cuts in about a half every foot that you get away from your windowsill. If I put this plant in a southern facing windowsill, you get direct light. If I move this plant about a foot away from that southern facing windowsill that's unobstructed, that gets a lot of light, all of a sudden we're in medium light or bright indirect territory. If I put this more than two feet away from a window, we're in like medium to low light. And once you're like three to four feet away from a window, you're in low light situation. So this was a huge mistake I made as a, when I was a plant killer. I had unobstructed southern facing windows in my apartment in New York City. And I thought, oh, I have Southern exposure. I have tons of light. And because eyes perceive brightness differently than plants do, I saw that, you know, six feet from my windows was still bright, but the volume of light was so little that any plants that I put all the way six feet from my windows, like withered away and died. So really you do want to kind of crouch all your plants up against your windows, especially if you don't have Southern facing or supplement with grow lights. But we'll do another video on grow lights. I have an old grow light tour and we'll link it here if you want to see the grow lights that I had in my old apartment. We'll do a video on grow lights moving forward because that's a whole nother science and art plant friends. These are general rules for bright indirect light. So understand your window orientation, understand what's obstructing you, and then understand where in your house you're putting it. And then with those three things, you can pretty much make a guesstimation of what kind of light you have. But if you want to nerd out, I have a free download, the Understanding Natural Light download. It has this cool graph. You download a free app and you will literally track the light in your home over the course of three days to understand exactly what type of light you have. So if you want to nerd out, we're going to link it below. You can download it and walk yourself through this three-day kind of exercise to really nerd out and understand what kind of light you're working with. A couple troubleshooting things before I leave you. If you want larger leaves, you probably need more light. A lot of the answers with houseplants is more light because we so often are underlighting our houseplants. I get asked a lot, if I have a room with no windows, can I put plants in it? I'm so sorry to tell you, but the answer is no. If you have no light, your plants have no way of making food and they will die. You can put a plant in a bathroom with no windows and it will slowly die over the course of a couple of months. That's you know cheaper. That's more affordable than replacing it with flowers every week. But no, plants need light to photosynthesize. So if you're going to put it in a room with no windows, you have to supplement with the grow light or it will ultimately wither away. If your plant growth is getting leggy, another thing that is an easy way to measure your plant growth and what kind of light you're working with is internodes. So on this ficus, this is a node where the leaf attaches to the stem. The space in between the nodes, this is a node leaf, this is a node leaf, this is the internode. If this is shorter, I know that there's more light. Plants will get leggy when the internodes start to stretch because the plants will continue looking for light and they'll start stretching and moving towards the light. So if you see that you have a plant that you bring back from the garden center, the internodes are each about an inch long, and then all of a sudden you put it in a north-facing window and you notice that the internodes start getting longer and longer and longer, that's a sign that your plant isn't getting enough light that it needs because it's stretching. Or if you want your plant to be bushier, you can give it more light and you'll see the internodes getting shorter and shorter and shorter. One other tip with lighting that I see people troubleshooting is plants will angle their leaves towards the sun. So if you have a ficus and you put it in a window and the window's right here, it might start angling all of its leaves towards the sun. So every couple of weeks, once a quarter, rotate your pot about a quarter so that the plant doesn't all angle its leaves one way and then tip over. So if you want the plant to grow nice and upright, but you're only doing windows where it's going to have to lean, just remember to rotate your plants. There are too many plants for me to break down low, medium, high. I have a couple here, right? So if you need low light tolerant plants, ferns are great. Pothos are great. If you want high light plants, 
ficus are great. Hoya are great. If you're looking for a medium light plant, anthurium are great. Alocasia are great. We have specific care videos on all of these, but I've really taken the guesswork out of figuring out light situations with your plant with my plant parent personality test. It's two minutes. It's free. Go on my website, take it. I'll give you your plant parent personality, your strengths, your weaknesses, and a tailored list of plants that are perfect for your lifestyle broken down by light. If you struggle at the garden center with overwhelm, you don't know which plants to get, just take my personality test and then bring that list of plants to the garden center and give it to one of the associates and they'll help you shop. Thank you so much for Proven Winners Leaf Joy for partnering with me on this nerdy episode. All of these gorgeous plants are Proven Winners Leaf Joy. I highly recommend checking them out. When you're at the garden center, ask for Proven Winners Leaf Joy. Look for the Proven Winners tag, the Proven Winners Leaf Joy tag. These plants are grown such high quality conditions. They're breeding such cool varieties. This is the ficus happiness for growing joy ficus happiness they have amazing plant selections super healthy plants thank you proven winners leaf joy i hope this episode helps you take that personality test take that download empower yourself plant friends because let me tell you once you understand the lighting environment for your house your plants are going to thrive you are going to be so empowered you're going to be able to choose confidently what plants are going to thrive with you and i hope that helps you keep growing joy